Hey guys, so we're back to our virtual machine and we're back to kind of doing again some demo. So this time I'm going to show you how to kind of configure the uh, a very specific plugin on the XFCE panel. And uh, again, this is kind of in the light of what we've been working on. So as you remember, we have this kind of an hybrid setup that consists of uh, i3 as a window manager and uh, the XFCE panel kind of down here. So this brings, I believe that this brings the best of both worlds. I have a tiling window manager that's very convenient, again, for me anyway. And I also have a graphic panel that, again, is very customizable. Equally, I would say that as customizable as i3 blocks or any other, uh, any other kind of panel that you can think of. And the reason why it's as customizable as the others is, again, you can change the style, you can change the icons, anything. But you can also change the behavior. And the way in which you change the behavior of this window, of this, sorry, of this panel is by using a very specific plugin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to issue a search command using my package manager. So if you're using Void Linux, again, you do this. But let's say if you're using Ubuntu, for example, you would use a NEPT get search. Uh, these are kind of the equivalent commands. And I'm going to look up, so XFC4, and I'm going to grab for plugin just so that we get a more concise list. So these are kind of all the different plugins that are available for the XFC4 panel. And you have a, a, quite a lot of them. So you have, for example, X keyboard is set, allows you to set a keyboard layout. You have weather plugins. Really, most of the things that you would usually do with a panel, you can do it. You can do them by simply installing a plugin and then uh, and then placing the plugin on the location that you want. I'll show you. I'll show this later how this is done. But uh, do know this. But if any, if for any reason any of those plugins is not, uh, none of those plugins is is working for what you want to do, well, you can also program your own plugin by using what is called a generic monitor, and this is kind of a general purpose uh, kind of plugin that allows you essentially to get, to feed it a bash script, and then the output is going to appear on that monitor ever so often. So again, th this may be already many of you are, may already be used to doing so if you come from i3 because you have to essentially make the same thing, uh, do the same thing on a i3 block system or maybe if you're using Polybar. So you may already know how to do that, but if you're coming again from a graphical uh, desktop environment world, you may have not needed to do that. So if you want, you, you have this option again. And uh, this is already installed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the panel and show you how it works. So you can always right click on this XFC panel and this brings up essentially kind of the panel preferences. So notice that I can come here and then properties. And if you go to the tab items, you notice that these the items that appear here are kind of the disposition of your of your kind of panel. So from top to bottom here, it goes from left to right there. So this is the order you have the applications menu and then the window buttons, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. If you guys are interested, I, I may go more into details on how to customize the panel. But as of right now, we'll be focusing on how to add the generic monitor. So again, if I want to add any kind of item to this panel, what I'm going to do is I go here on the right and I add the new item. And I'm going to select the generic monitor. So this shows the output of a command. Again, it can be any command. And I already set up two kind of separators here back to back just so that I could place the generic monitor here. And out of the box, this is what it looks like. So nothing to write home about, but uh, you can configure it by go by right clicking on it and going on properties. And these are kind of again the the, the again the configuration for the generic monitor. So you can give it any command. Again, as an example, I'm going to feed it echo hello world, and this is going to do what you guess. So it's going to echo it, and whatever is echoed with uh, whatever is echoed by this command is going to appear here. In fact, it's going to print out essentially the standard out if you know what your file descriptors are on Linux. So if I close this, uh, notice again that I have kind of a label. I can give it a name and I have the output of the command. So in this case, the output of the echo is just, again, the, the string that I fed it. And you can change the period again if you want it to be printed ever, every five seconds, for example. Again, this is not going to change anything in this case because the, the script doesn't change with time. But if you had a more complicated script, again, you would use this. And just to show what a more complicated script can look like. So again, you can feed it any command. So really, you could write a Python script or a Bash script, anything that fits you, uh, your use case. Uh, you, could, uh, you could give anything as a command here. And as an example, I'm going to write kind of a simple, 
a ping, a ping program just to check that I have connectivity to the internet, for example. So in fact, I already started writing it and it's under my dot scripts folder. I can, I'm going to get it. It's the ping test. And I'm also going to open it on another kind of another window so that we can look at it. This is what it looks like. And uh, again, this is just a, uh, Kind of a this is essentially what uh, what it does it does a thing and then I apply some pre, uh, some post processing to it in order to grab for the thing that I want so if you issue a ping script on its own I'm going to ping the public Google DNS server you may recognize this IP address and what it does is you can notice that it kind of uh, just uh, in the uh, infinitely sends a ping message ever so often and it prints the output so the sequence number the TTL the time that it takes, the, this is essentially the delay. And whenever I control C out of that, I essentially get a kind of a report, a summarized version of all this data that it collected from the ping. So let's say that I want to measure the delay between my machine and this Google DNS server just by grabbing the output of this. Well, I can issue the ping command. And uh, again, since the, gener the generic monitor is what takes care of kind of the periodicity, I don't really need to issue a ping and wait for it. I can just ping uh, with a count of one, which means that every time the command is called, I'm going to, one, uh, to send one thing. And this is what it looks like. Now, if I want to, uh, to get to the specifics, I can grab, for example, the lines that contain time. And in fact, you're going to notice that there are two of them. So there is the first line, which is kind of corresponds to this line. And then there is the second line, which contains time in it, which is the line which has the summary, the report for all the data. So I don't really want this line. So what I can do is I can use, for example, after I have grabbed for time, after I have filtered for the lines which have time on it, I can also apply a head, for example. So if I apply a head command and it's going to, again, filter based on the number of lines. So I'm going to take the first one line of this output, notice that it has two, and now it's going to print only the first one, which is kind of what I want. And you can use this iterative pro uh, kind of this iterative process uh, on any kind of command that you're using on the generic monitor. This is just to give you a, an idea. And once you have filtered again to the level of the line that you want, you can then filter to the level of the words you want. So in fact, you can notice that uh, if we look at this kind of in a matrix way, uh, you can see that there are kind of several columns and the columns, they are separated by these little spaces. So in fact, what I can do is I can use the awk command and the awk, once again, it filters kind of tables and matrices based on a delimiter. So I'm going to give it a delimiter of uh, space. And this is what the uppercase F option does. So I'm going to use the space as a delimiter and I'm going to uh, to essentially filter it. So notice that this is the first field. So this is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So what I want, I, I want the seventh and the eighth um, kind of fields. I want to see the time, the number of uh, kind of the, again, the amount of time. And I also wanted to see the order of, uh, gra uh, of grandeur. So the the those milliseconds as well. So I want to print these last two. And in order to do that, I can simply issue a command like this. So I'm going to print the column seven and I'm going to print the column eight like this. And you notice that what this does is it, well, what do we expect? So we're going to print these two values. And this is essentially what this whole script does. Now, once we have that, we can quite simply feed it to our generic monitor and it's going to execute this command every five seconds, for example, and uh, it's going to output it. So if I do a PWD, this is kind of the path. I'm going to give the full path to this bash script. I have set it to executable before, just so you know. So if you need, you can add the executable flag to a script by using the change mod plus X and we'll just execute it. So this is under home void.scripts and then ping test.sh. And if I want, I can remove the, uh, the label. Uh, I'll just remove it again and close this. And uh, I did misspell the home, so I'll go back here. Oh, I need to add an, an O. 
And notice that I have this kind of script that keeps updating my, my panel every five seconds. So notice that it just changed again. And this is going to keep working uh, like this, so indefinitely again. And this is a very simple use case. I didn't want to go much into the details, but this gives you kind of the workflow. So you can use any kind of Unix command that you want to track over time. And then you can apply grep and awk and head and all those different commands in order to filter down to the field that you want to accompany over time. And then this is going to be part of your generic monitor. Obviously, this is not a real life useful uh, command because again, this is kind of uh, arbitrary and uh, there are better ways to get network performance, but this was much more of a demonstration on what can be done. So hopefully this has anyway inspired some of you and if you uh, and if you have any questions about this, you can also ask me later on your comments and uh, stuff. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.